Hi, welcome to another uh, screencast on developing XMPP applications with uh, the Wopal framework. So this screencast is a continuation of my of a previous screencast uh, that that I've shown here in this uh, in this UR URL. So just to recap, in that uh, screencast, what I did was I developed an application that allows a client to query uh, a database, and this is how it works. So we have got a client say. Uh, let's say Fred at Bad Computer who has logged on to an XMPP server and what the client does is this, the client sends a message to query at customer.badcomputer.subdomain and in the body of, of the message uh, what uh, we'll put is we'll put the customer uh, ID that, uh, we, we, that we wish to retrieve the record. When the component uh, receives this particular message, the component will query the database using the customer ID and it will then return uh, the customer uh, record back to, uh, back to the client. So the question now is, uh, how does Fred at Bad Computer or how does any client, arbitrary client, knows how to send a message to query at customer.badcomputer? So, XMPP has uh, has a facility has a service discover facility where where a client can uh, uh, query and introspect uh, a server uh, by using uh, two uh, two types of messages uh, called uh, disco info and disco item. Disco info means uh, tell tell me about yourself, and disco item uh, means List, uh, give me a list of all the services or all the uh, Jabber entities that the server is holding. So let's look at how this works through an example. So uh, we have got a client here and we have got a server or our, uh, our component at the bottom right corner. So when the client logs into an XMPP server, the client first of all sends an IQ message uh, with, with a query uh, as the child, so this query um, has a uh, has a disco info uh, namespace. So what we are saying uh, is this: uh, bad computer, tell me about yourself. So when the bad computer, when the server uh, receives this particular message, the the server will now uh, re uh, reply to this message, and the the content of the of this uh, reply contains. Uh, Two types are uh, two types of information. The first is the identity of the server. So, what is the identity of the server? So, in this particular case, we know that bad computer is a is an XMPP server, and it also lists gives a list of all the features um, or all the services that uh, this particular server uh, hosts. So, one of the uh, fe uh, so as you can see here, um, this particular computer it hosts like uh, pops up. Uh, managed subscription and it also has this particular feature called uh, disco uh, dis disco items so what basically it's saying is that you know uh, I'm at, uh, the the server bad computer is telling our clients that you know I've got uh, a list of uh, services that that you can interrogate so on seeing this the client now sends a message an IQ message now with a disco item namespace to bad computer, bad computer will now return with uh, with the result, and what you'll do now is this: you'll list uh, all the entities. So the entities are are written or are represented as a Jabber ID like this. So for example, if you want to get to the PubSub uh, publish some subscribe service, you will have to send to PubSub dot bad computer, or if it's a user search, you you send your query to search dot bad computer. So in our case, our customer query uh, will be at customer dot uh, bad computer. So, what happens next is this: the client will now send to each of this uh, Jabber ID or uh, Jabber entity a, a disco info. So for our case, we are interested in cust customer dot bad computer. So we'll just look at that. So what the client does now is this: it sends a message, it sends an IQ. Uh, message uh, to to bad computer, and what happens is now the bad computer or our component now replies to this particular uh, message. 
So what you see now is this again, uh, our component identifies itself as store JPA, and what we also do is this: we also list um, the features or uh, that we support, and one of the things that we that we uh, that we support is disco item. So on seeing this, the client now sends a disco item message to cus to customer uh, dot bad computer, and the, when the reply comes back. Uh, we will tell uh, the client that you know we are actually holding uh, an entity called query at uh, customer dot bad computer subdomain. Now, when the client sees this, the client still does not know that this uh, is a customer query uh, entity. So what the client now does is this: the client now sends a disco info to customer query at customer uh, sorry query at customer dot bad computer. So now the the query uh, entities replies and it identifies itself. Uh, it says that is that we are an automation and we are query, and more importantly, it returns a a a, a URI a, a a URI that uniquely identifies it as a service or as an entity that supports the customer query uh, service. So in this particular case, we have used the uh, URI colon customer query as the identifying URI. So once the client sees this particular URI, you will know that the entity, uh, the Jabber entity, supports customer query. So that's how we can find out uh, from any XMPP server that we connect to what are uh, uh, what are the services that it supports. Or in this case, uh, you know, if we are looking for a particular customer query, uh, customer query service, then we can look. Uh, we can continue to use disco info and disco item to introspect uh, each of these uh, each of the domain or subdomain and find the correct uh, entity that has got that has got a URI customer query associated with it. So now that we sort of roughly understand uh, how service discovery works, uh, so let us see how we will how we are going to implement this uh, using Vo Vopal. So this is the code uh, from uh, uh, from from the last screencast, and what I'm going to do now is this: I'm going to create now a class called customer que uh, customer query service discovery to handle uh, all our service dis discovery. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is this: I want to put it under CDI control. So I'm going to put request scoped. Okay. The second thing that I will do is this: since this particular class is going to handle uh, IQ packet, I will annotate it with uh, with with the IQ uh, annotation. Uh, so this is part of the Vopal framework. And the third thing I, w I would like to do is this: uh, since we are going to handle query, so I will say that uh, besides just IQ, we we are also going to handle query. So we have got these three. Uh, top level annotations. So the first method that we are going to uh, create is, uh, if you recall the sequence, uh, is uh, the, the disco info uh, message directed at uh, uh, at our component. So I'm going to create a method, and what you do is you return a bunch of stuff. Okay, you return a bunch of stuff uh, to identify itself, and then disco info like that. And so let me just create this first and then I'll explain result okay so what we want to do is this we want to add so if you recall part of the uh, part of the disco info uh, reply message are two particular item first is uh, identification uh, of the of the entity and secondly a list of services that uh, or list of features that we support. So what we are going to do is this: we are going to identify ourselves ourselves, okay, with category and type. So the category and type is actually standard. So what we are going to do is this: we are going to identify ourselves as a store, and and we we say that we are a JPA JPA store. So we also say that we support disco 
items. Okay, so this called items is just a a, a constant, uh, a name names namespace like that. Okay, so so that will hand, handle that. So to so to so to to make this method fire, what we do is this: we say query. This one will only handle any queries that is disco info. So when um when an IQ message comes in with disco info, this uh this is the method that is going to fire. Okay, so that's first. So since we have said that we support disco items, then the next message that comes in will be a disco uh, items message. So now we say query predefined disco items okay and then we're going to say public so in disco items if you recall we we return uh, one Java entity which is our query so we say public we're going to return a string disco items like that so we say return query at so we need so we need the subdomain so we need the subdomain. So we do not know what the subdomain is. So Vopal supports injection. So the, the way to get subdomain is to use name, uh, which is CDI. And then we say, we want to get the name of the subdomain like this. So this, so the subdomain will be injected in. Okay. So we append the subdomain and then we return the, the query. Okay. So now, so once we have got once we have returned the query, the third message that we need to handle is a disco info now directed at query at the subdomain. Okay, so a disco inf info message. So again, we say query predefined bindings disco info. Now we need to have a two because uh, because now we are actually handling a sp uh, handling the disco info for a specific. Uh, for a specific entity, so we say something like this: query at plus predefined bindings parameter subdomain parameter. Okay, so any uh, disco info mes message directed at query at uh, at our subdomain, uh, this particular method will handle it. So again, this method is list object query disco info like that okay and again we we create a we create a list for results okay and now we say result add new identi identity spec specification and now what we're going to do is this we are going to identify ourselves as an automation okay as an automation and we are going to, we're going to say it's a it's a customer query automation or customer query automation okay we also need to uh, add to our result um, a feature a uri that identifies this so if you recall it's it's uri customer query so this particular uh, this particular uh, URI, it's a it's a URI that is agreed on between the client and the server. So anytime when when the client sees particular URI, the client will know that uh, this component supports customer query. Okay. So now we are done. What we're going to do now is this: we're going to clean and build it. Okay. And we're now going to deploy the application. So let's look at this. Let's look at Glassfish. And okay, so we have successfully uh, connected to our uh, XMPP server, which is Open Fire. So now what we are going to do is this: uh, we are going to use uh, Pigeon. And we're going to use uh, the XMPP console. The XMPP console and the service discovery is a plugin that you need to install. It does not come, as far as I know, it doesn't come with the standard uh, pigeon. Okay. So what we what we what we're going to do is this: we're going to browse back computer. 
Okay, so find services. So what you see now is this. Is this we'll see a list of these services and our customer query. So let's look and see how how this is resolved. Okay, so the uh, the client sends sends to bad computer, which is our XMPP server, a disco info. So now bad computer now re returns uh, a re replies. We first of all identify itself. So in this particular case, it has identified itself as an open fire server, and it's also a, a pub sub. Uh, sub type and these are the list of features that it supports so one of the features that it supports is disco item now if the if the server doesn't support disco items then all interaction will stop now because there is no uh, other way that we could inter um, uh, we, we can proceed so when on seeing this on seeing on seeing the disco item the client now sends a disco item to bad computer and the bad computer now returns with a list of Jabber entities like so Okay, so if you look at here, each one of these correspond to, to one of these entities. So these are the these are the subdomain. So if you notice, this is our subdomain customer cu customer bad comparison is, is our subdomain subdomain. Now, uh, since customer bad com dot bad computer is an external component, it will only show up when the application when the component is uh, is deployed or it's connected to the uh, to, to to the open fire server. So what happens now is this: the client will now send to each of these end subdomain a di a disco uh, info. Okay. So uh, so for us, we are only interested in uh, customer dot computer. So let's look for customer dot computer. So when customer dot computer uh, replies, uh, you see this is the standard reply that the component supports, and this is actually our reply. Okay, for the comp component. So we are saying that you know we are a uh, we are a store, JPA if you recall, and also uh, we support disco items as well. Okay, so what happened now is this. Okay, the client can now now sends a disco in uh, disco info to customer dot bad computer, so it now sends a uh, a, a packet uh, an IQ. Uh, message to to customer dot bad computer saying you know give me a list of all the entities that you are hosting and this is our reply if you recall okay so this is the subdomain that the uh, Vopal has injected in this is our reply so now the client will now send a disco info to query at customer dot bad computer and this is the this is the final uh, interaction so as you can see. Um, again, we identi identify ourselves as an automation customer query, and this is the feature. So, on seeing this feature, the client now knows that uh, query at customer dot bad computer uh, is the entity that supports customer query. So, uh, using Vopal, as you can see, you can very easily develop very very uh, dynamic uh, uh, service uh, service interaction, uh, service query, uh, service discovery interaction with uh, with 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 decline. Uh, thank you very much.